So I'll give a brief on what happened in the TOC call yesterday. We just gave a status update to the TOC call, uh, highlighting the highlight the members that we have and the affiliations that we have <clears throat> along with uh, the activities that we are doing in terms of uh, uh, in terms of assessments and then uh, the governance structure that we've created and stuff. So uh, that's what happened yesterday. But uh, it's too big for me to fill in Dan's shoes, so I'm just going to yield to Cormac. Hey, Justin, welcome. Do you want to take over and run the meeting? Uh, so JJ, Justin isn't, isn't lined, lined up, up until, until next. Week. Oh, okay. So I, I'd have to run this this time. Yeah. All right. So. Do let's do check in, Justin. You seem to be first on my list anyway. No, I seem to be picking on you. The temporary. Let's see, lost my connectivity. Okay. Um. I is that who is that? Is that Justin Capos in Santiago or Justin Cormac? Who do you want to go first? Uh, Justin Cormac seems to be the first on my list. Um, I, I don't have much to report. I've been on holiday, um, and but I'm looking forward to working with on the piece we're going to do around the um, uh, the stuff with Santiago on um, uh, supply chain security, which we're going to start this week, which I'm looking forward to. Um, uh, but apart from that, I don't have much to report. Perfect. Uh, the next step on my list is Ga. Garethir G. I don't know how do you. Gareth. 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 Ah, yeah, no, the, the R is part of my second name. All right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, Gareth uh, Product Sneak. Um, uh, this last week, I've actually mainly been on holiday, which has been very nice, which does, but it did mean I did not do anything related to uh, security of any stripe. <laughs> Seems like a fun, fun holiday, but obviously you were missing out on security. Ah, uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was nice to miss out on security for a week. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, back to things now. Awesome. Joshua Lock. Hey, yeah, I don't really have anything to share. I've just uh, turned up this week because I'm interested in the supply chain security stuff. Perfect. More Goldberg. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, no, nothing to share or report. I'm actually, I think it's it's the first or second time I'm joining you guys. Um, yeah, but happy to learn and see how can I contribute. Um, you know, mostly around areas of um, identity and access, uh, which is where I come from. Nice, nice, nice. Thanks, Dan Shah. So we got confirmation this week that we have our um, our sessions at KubeCon. So in addition to Secure Today, we will have the uh, traditional sort of intro and um, deep dive sessions that uh, um, we've been doing. Uh, those have been productive, uh, you know, and, and many of you um you know joined us uh, following those sessions so we'll keep on uh, keep on plugging away uh at those and uh, i think we're going to try to take a, a a slightly different tack uh, this time around and actually really present different things in the intro and uh deep back so uh nice work on that as, as it uh comes up to the event perfect all right chris welcome I think that's me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, mostly just continuing our work in Falco and getting it ready for our goal of um, proposing it to get moved to the incubation around October once we hit our one year mark. Um, we've brought in three different outside repositories to, to the GitHub org 
and we're going to start putting together some demos of a couple of new tools and um, how to use Falco and Kubernetes and what the the end-to-end -end user story is going to look like. So if folks are interested in a demo either here or just to check it out online, uh, we're happy to to help. The one action item I had from last week was uh, to follow up um, regarding some questions about uh, us here in the SIG, Ducey is the one who has the more information on that. I don't think he could join the call today, so we're going to push that one off until next week, and hopefully we'll have more information for folks then. Perfect, yeah. Seems cool. like something that, yeah, seems like that something that we should consider for a demo in this group at some point. Uh, I would at least create an issue for that and see if we could slot it at some point. <laughs> Okay. If you create an issue, feel free to tag me uh, at Chris Dash Nova, and sure. um, yeah, we can put some stuff together. Awesome. Um, next up, Roger. Roger K. Oh, if you're speaking, you're in mute. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. now talking, not just moving my lips. <laughs> um, it's. Um, we're, we at SUSE are heads down in a release now. We're doing our gold master candidate this week. Talk about language that persists from, you know, that's about as relevant as uh, dialing the phone is gold master, I think, these days. But um, part of a big change in this release for us has been uh, incorporating Cilium and moving to, um, you know, strong Kubernetes network security and security policies. And so I've been spending a lot of time playing evangelist in-house for that and starting to do a customer roadshow on latest updates that we'll probably focus on, um, Kubernetes network security. Nice. Cool. Thank you. Martin? Hello from me. Uh, I don't have much to update. Uh, I'll continue my work on Claire. I already shared with you guys what, what is the project about. So if you have any, it's a static, uh, it's an it's a analysis for containers for security vulnerabilities in them. But yeah, that's for me. And also I'm interested to, um, I, I, sh I uh, shared this uh, in, a, in, in an issue uh, about the observer uh, or slash intern role in the security assessment. So I will be interested to discuss this topic. Oh, perfect, yeah. Um, Justin Capos and Justin Cormac is uh, your per go to person for that. Uh, Jenkin, Jenkin Liu, do you want to go next? Yeah. Hi, that's me. Um, I, I'm the first time to this meeting, so I work at. Uh, Welcome. I work at ByteDance, and we're a heavy uh, a Kubernetes user. and. Uh, Adopting a lot of uh, other CNCF components such as PP Spire. So, I work on production and incident access management. So, I thought it would be interest, uh, helpful for me to join the meeting to understand the, the roadmap for the, the coming security features for those kind of platforms. Perfect, awesome. Um, yeah, if you've, if you've not added yourself as contributor, uh, there is GitHub as a front page readme. Uh, so, if you want to go add yourself, uh, then you can start contributing. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Aiden Feldman. Hey there. Um, I haven't been doing anything specifically related to the working group, but I work for TTS in the federal government. And yeah, I'm interested in hearing about the supply chain stuff because I've been thinking about it a lot recently. What's TTS? <laughs> Uh, so TTS is uh, the Technology Transformation Services. So we run a lot of government-wide programs. Like, uh, 
and uh, search.gov and login.gov and cloud.gov, et cetera. And then do a lot of work sort of modernizing technology with other agencies. Sarah used to work here. Hi, Aiden. Oh. Hi. So reach out to me if you're interested in hearing more. Mark, Mark Manning. Yeah. Good to have you here, Aiden. Mark, do you want to go next? Mark M. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yep, yep. Sorry, so um, uh, my name is Mark. I'm from uh, NCC Group, and I'm still trying to uh, determine where to kind of fit in and contribute uh, some of my uh, coworkers. Um, doing uh, security-related audits is usually our background, um, so we've been listening to your direction to go into some of the uh, threat modeling projects that I think you're uh, currently working on. We're going to see if we can contribute there. We're also doing some uh, public fuzzing projects uh, that we'd uh, like some partnership in the next couple of weeks. If anybody's interested in that type of thing, uh, please reach out. has a contributor uh, I'd suggest doing that and while doing that uh, uh, we haven't followed that before but uh, as a thing in terms of like where, which which area you're interested in if you could note note that then uh, it'll, it'll be helpful for the rest of the team to tag you so Christian Lassina Heather can you hear me Hello? Yep. Okay, there we go. Uh, well, I'm just uh, I'm filling in for my colleague here, Ray, who usually attends this meeting. And uh, actually, I did attend a couple of uh, meetings ago, and the supply chain stuff actually caught my ear and raised a few ears on my at my uh, at my company's um, in my company's team. So I wanted to see if there were any updates on that. And otherwise, I just wanted to keep Ray abreast of any updates in the SIG. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Jonathan Meadows. I'm Jonathan Meadows. Um, I put together uh, a couple of my thoughts on the software supply chain and the SDL work. Uh, it's really important to us. Uh, it's JP Morgan, and uh, I sent it through and had a quick chat with Santiago. Uh, so we're interested in the in this piece of the working group. That's it for this week. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Santiago and Capos. Uh, hello. So I'm Santiago, speaking through uh, Justin's computer. Um, Good, keep going. I'm trying to keep the camera. Yeah, screen. So I'm mostly uh, interested in uh, having this meeting move uh, forward with the software supply chain security uh, project that we, uh, we've been talking about. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, excited to hear what everybody thinks and I'm hoping we uh, leave the meeting with a, a specific path forward. Probably we can merge the proposal and start getting things going. Okay. Great, and uh, I guess my updates this week. So I had a chat with Sarah over the weekend. Thank you, Sarah, for, for doing that about uh, some of the OPA assessment. We've had some back and forth on that. Um, I found some folks that are actually real world supply chain folks that deal with manufacturing and stuff that are actually quite interested in using in Toto. So um, we'll see how that works in their process. So um, I guess that one of the lessons from that is is that uh, if we build something good from a security standpoint, um, the, the real world and real people actually may want to apply it to whatever uh, things they're doing in that case too. Um, we finally just got the Intoto logo, um, I think finally approved by Chris A. So we're gonna have a new logo up soon. Um, and uh, our secure systems lib is an official Debian package and unstable and we should have Intoto and Tough uh, in there if not at the end of this week, then uh, before the next meeting. Perfect, thank you. Brandon? Hi, um, yeah, so I've, I've mostly been on vacation as well last week, so not too much update on my side. 
No protections. Thank you. Ricardo. Yeah, uh, Ricardo, and I work for Rakuten, and this is the first time I attended this meeting. Uh, so, welcome. There's a couple of items in the agenda that Brandon actually put up. Um, I've been in contact with him, so um, just want to hear about that, and um, yeah, hopefully I can learn something. And you know, I'm glad to hear how I can contribute myself to. So. Perfect, thank you. Mark, Mark Underwood. Hi everybody, I'll keep it short. So nothing new to report. I usually represent things going on with NIST. Today there's a public uh, document released on cyber resilience. It does occur to me we might be kind of slacking in our group dealing with resilience issues. So maybe that's just a tip of the hat to that one. And uh, reminder, I also work at a FinTech, so we're interested in supply chain related stuff. And uh, Justin, the people in the, in the MRP world where I came from decades ago called this the bill of resources. So the, the mapping from uh, the software bill of materials to that is a time phase uh, configuration management tool that, that they use for that. So, and when you figure that out, sell it to Boeing. That's it for me. Perfect, thank you. Christian, Christian K. Hey, I'm, I'm Christian. I work for Google's cloud security team. Um, nothing big new to report. We have an ongoing discussion internally about a machine readable metadata format that captures some of the software supply chain stuff. So mostly to figure out if there's any, if, if you find a security problem, if you, that you can trace that to affected, uh, uh, you know, end, end products, right? So um, I've asked them to make that, bring that into shape that maybe we can uh, bring that to this group at some point. So I'm, I'm figuring out how to do that. Fantastic, yeah. Thank you. Um, Sarah. Hello. I've been traveling. But Hello. Trying to catch up. Can you hear me? Yep, yep, yep. Um, catching up on some GitHub PRs, so I meant to reach out to the triage group and I didn't. Um, I added to an action item of this meeting, um, if anybody's up for doing a final review of the meeting facilitator role, we came up with some preconditions, so particularly people who have helped out as scribes or played in some kind of leadership role in the group or newcomers to, re to review that, and um, it's already been sort of in principle approved, but I added some kind of uh, catch up. Uh, process things. So would love somebody's review on that. Also um, caught up on the uh, last action item from that's on our side from the Intoto assessment. Um, the discussion today is what we're doing as a SIG to um, kind of look at supply chain attacks in general that Santiago is leading. And then we had this other action item that we were going to, we recommended to the CNCF that um, perhaps they could identify a UX researcher to figure out um, you know, kind of whether there are um, speed bumps in adoption of Intoto or if the project should do something, if the focus should be on companies adopting or perhaps there's some dependency um, that would be more fruitful for um, Intoto to spend effort on. So um, I added that to the notes. Um, feel free to um, click on links and um, chime in or review or whatever. Oh, also, I've been chatting with Jonathan Meadows about presenting next week um, about uh, the security, uh, the training he's got going on. So I think I'm going to pencil that in because we haven't gotten uh, um, I don't know if we've finalized that, but I'm putting that into the planned meetings proposal. Perfect, 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 yeah. Is there, should we get in this queue for that or uh, is that going to be tracked as a doc outside? Let me see if there's an issue for that. If not, I'll ask okay. them to make one. Thank you for pointing Thank that you. out. Amy. Tech 
having trouble coming off mute. Howdy. Um, yeah. I am here to Thank be you. able to help answer questions around any of the security day stuff that's happening at San Diego and any other kind of CNC stuff running around. So, hi. Thank you. Yeah, good fun. Yeah, yeah security, security day is going to be fun. I mean, like a lot of heavy lifting is done by Amy, Emily, and... Uh, Mostly Michael Ducey and uh, uh, Emily Michael Fox. Michael yeah. <laughs> may or may not be on the call. So, yep, yep, yep. so might be useful after we finish the rounds, then might be useful for you to give a little bit of an update on that. Um, so who else is there's a call in user two in uh, and a six five zero six four 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 eight two seven eight. Hey, it's Emily Fox. I'm on the call. <laughs> um, hey. sorry about that. Nice. Uh, so quick update, uh, the KubeCon notifications went out, so uh, we're encouraging everybody to post um, in their various social media sites that they can recycle their security KubeCon and CloudNativeCon talks to Security Day. So right now what we're trying to do is um, drive up C CFP submissions, make people aware of it. Um, there are still sponsorships available, which just means that we get a nicer security day. Um, the website is available. It has all the content. It talks about open spaces. Um, right now we're just trying to drive more CFP traffic so that when it comes time to close the submissions, we have more than just a couple to look at. We've got five that have been submitted, eight that were in draft as of yesterday. So we're hoping to get a lot more. Um, if you know anybody in the security space that has a good idea or you've overheard them talking about a really good thing relevant to cloud native security, um, encourage them to submit it as a CFP. Maybe do a co-presentation as well. Um, that's all I have for updates. Okay. I would I'd encourage uh, some of the CNCF security projects to uh, advertise about this in their forum, uh, in whatever forum that they have. Like, I know we have Spiffy, we have uh, OPA as well. So I think we should probably use those channels to advertise. So I can personally reach out to both of them uh, or, and then uh, give them an ask of uh, promoting it within their community. <laughs> So, um, uh, a question about I mean, it's already on the agenda, but um, yeah, regarding the SIG security uh, summit, uh, is that an independent event, or did you also get a pass? If you're uh, a speaker of that event, you also get a pass to KubeCon. So, I can speak to that right now. No, if that is an issue and you are an accepted speaker, reach out to me. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Um, so I am, uh, for this month, I think I'm going to uh, try and facilitate. Uh, Sarah and Dan has been helping out facilitate this for quite some time. Uh, so I'm still trying to fit into their shoes. And uh, each of their shoes are, is way bigger than mine. <laughs> uh, but. I'm going to, uh, as I catch up and I say, uh, try and get the agenda squared away for the next meeting. Um, for this meeting, is there, uh, I'd, I'd like to keep this as an open agenda unless there is this prior agenda that's set already. Dan, Sarah, uh, if you can comment on it, that'll be useful. But, uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, today we're uh, slated to have a discussion around uh, supply chain. Okay. And they'll go, uh, are you able to kick that off today? Or I, I know you're all uh, uh, fighting over uh, Justin's computer. <laughs> no, uh, you're yeah. one. I, I've, oh. I've been relegated to the, to the floor off the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. so I think I'm tough in having the proposal, uh, and I think there was some hesitation by uh, Justin Cormack about it. Um, I also met with uh, Jonathan, I think uh, also the Fox, I think it's Emily Fox, uh, took a look at the, the meeting notes that we have prepared. And uh, my understanding is that uh, 
timeline wise, we can probably start the proposal uh, uh, as a repository in which we take the existing in total supply chain compromises list and start enriching it with uh, with content uh, regarding certain types of compromises and then organically grow it into like a guide that people can uh, actually refer to and uh, eventually try to answer questions about what's the best way for uh, users to consult this uh, resource and use it to tighten their security process which I think that's the end goal. Um, I don't know if uh, I misquoted you, Justin Cormack. I don't know if, uh, I don't know what you think. I mean, I think that sounds reasonable. I think, um, I think it would be helpful if we're clear about who the audience for this is up front and, um, and what, kind of, what kind of maintenance we're gonna do over it, whether this is a one-off thing or whether they're going to maintain it on an ongoing basis mm -hmm. and those kinds of practical things and how long, you know, we're going to spend, what kind, what, you know, an outline of what we actually want to produce. Right. So uh, I feel we can elaborate a little bit on the document that already Jonathan and Emily helped me prepare. Uh, but uh, the audience is, uh, as far as I understand this and the consensus is we are trying to help uh, developers, cloud native uh, application developers and software engineers to tighten their software supply chain uh, in terms of security. So uh, with that in mind, I think uh, we pretty much want to like compile a list of recommendations and case studies and uh, and probably in the future, future like uh, scanning tools and things like this. Uh, my, my hope is that we can probably start with something small that doesn't require a lot of time. And as we see whether it has some success or not, we, uh, we can uh, increase the scope and the reach of the project. So Santiago, you mentioned you, there was a document that you started. I don't... Uh, do, is that something you want to share here or I think there was yeah. um, kind of some interesting discussion on the thread that was because um, originally it was focused on this catalog and then there was some discussion about kind of taking slightly different approaches and I'm just kind of curious where you're at with that. Right. This, um, this is a thing from Hamad. No, no. Well, it, it, the catalog is something we would be moving over because I think that will help us make a foundation on Oh, it's that Google Doc. It's that Google Doc. Uh, okay. I posted it on the Six Security chat on on the on the channel. Uh, Sorry, Slack we, or the chat channel? Is it further up? Slack. Yeah. Uh, probably a reply to Justin Cormack. As a matter of fact, I think it's there. Uh, that. All right, so I'll post it both places. I'll post it more obviously there, and I'll post it here. Thanks, it's having right. having caught up, and then everybody can. So it's uh, editable by everybody, just, uh, just a word of warning. But uh, basically the idea that I was having is we moved the catalog and from the catalog, we derive like a list of priorities that we can uh, write recommendations about. And uh, the the reason why I think the catalog is important, even if it's not uh, completely comprehensive, is that I think it drives a sense of reality and why and a sense of urgency. And I think it will make people understand why uh, software supply chain security is important and why they need to follow these practices, uh, which I think it's a uh, it's it's part of the battle that we're having that a lot of people are a little bit skeptical about this problem. I, I think a big bit of, bit of this is, is raising people's awareness of the actual issue. I think everyone in this call realizes it is an issue, but I, I wonder, and I, I get mixed feedback from others when I'm talking to people about supply chain security. And I think with that, that catalog that Santiago is proposing and other examples of this issue, I think one outcome of this sort of mini project would be to focus on raising people's awareness. Then based upon that, we can look at providing best practice guidance um, of, of how 
um, you know, focusing on an audience of software engineers um, and cloud native developers, they can actually fix that issue or start to mitigate some of those concerns. But t to me, my, my personal thing would be awareness and then an ability to, to work, fix that. Yeah, I think the awareness is pretty good nowadays, uh, at least in uh, developer circles. The problem, one of the problems is we get these big splashy headlines that say there was a supply chain compromise and then very little insight into what the compromise was, which is why the catalog will be so beneficial. Um, and a lot of the supply chain compromises we're seeing, uh, well, several of them end up being, you know, rudimentary user blunders, uh, reuse the same password everywhere and it got uh, scraped and um, so I've got nine Ruby gems that are published under my account or whatever, but then there are the problems which are um, different and uh, where it's easier to work on a technical solution beyond just, um, you know, telling everyone to use 2FA or whatever. So um, I think the catalog, that's why I'm really interested in the catalogs, to try and get a better understanding of um, the variety of the attacks and the different attacks beyond just account compromise. I also really mm -hmm. liked it, the idea of having the catalog segregated into group to categories, right? Different types of threats so that then also if it's, you know, if it's listed by um, chronologically, then it sort of implies that we're trying to write down every single one there ever was, but it ca putting them in categories then makes it more feel like there are examples and I don't necessarily want to sign up for keeping it fresh with every single possible thing that happened, but um, good examples of each category, I think would be a great goal to have. Yeah, no, so yeah, I, I agree. Cause then you can have examples of things that would mitigate that type of thing alongside right. the example and things like that as well. Right. I like, uh, yeah, I like that idea. I mean, I, I was just coming through the doc, uh, Real quick, uh, one thing that I would suggest, I'd also suggest that leave us a comment in the doc as well, is to document uh, non-goals. Uh, I see like goals and activities are documented, but uh, non-goals are not. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I think that's I think that's a valid point, and I think we can uh, like from the conversation we can pretty much extrapolate uh, certain. So, yeah. But uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, I feel there's a little bit of consensus on, well, we will take this catalog, put it into categories, then use these categories to drive uh, recommendations for best practices. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I feel that if, uh, if we are like on the same boat in that department, we could probably move on to a more formal proposal um, in which we actually have like a project that organically grows. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels that I'm brushing, but I'm also a little bit afraid of like uh, circling a little bit too much in the issue and then eventually not having a, an actual thing we can contribute out there. Well, um, JD wasn't here when we talked this initially, but this is, this is a proposal. We all agreed to do it. So there's no, this isn't, this discussion is not a gate to any action. This is a discussion with the group to help the initiative move forward by pulling on the wisdom of the the team here. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I think we're, um, you know, like I think we're trying to refine and capture and help, but not um, creating any sort of gate here. And I love the idea of coming up with a first iteration that's small and tight and effective, even if it doesn't do everything we possibly want. And then we can add additional issues for improvements we'd like to, to um, implement. I mean, I think, yeah, if it's going to be for raising awareness and uh, as well, I think making it short and readable so no more than i don't know six pages or something in that someone could circulate as a pdf say right. would actually be really helpful in that rather than something that's uh, feels like a, a catalog and so something that you could you could pass around to people and point at them and email them or whatever that they could yeah. un just to understand the problem Yes. Yeah, if you can encourage a community to maintain a catalog, you can use that as a data source for other things. So people who are talking about these things don't have to keep talking about the same compromise that was made in 2011. They can, you know, refer to something more recent in the same domain or... Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Right. I feel that the, that's my hope with a organically growing a community. Like everybody can, I don't know, spend five minutes reading the news and then going like, oh, well, I just found this uh, software supply chain compromise and I think it relates to this other one. Why don't we uh, uh, keep it around as a reference? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I mean, oh. feels like this can uh, help with wider, wider education efforts of the group as well. Um, like not strictly related to supply chain compromise, but choosing sane open source dependencies is obviously a problem from the fact that when uh, Ruby Gems had multiple compromises a couple of weeks ago, it turned out that like 1,200 people were downloading a gem that had only existed for a week and was crypto mining. So, um, Good old. You can, uh, you know, use this as motivation to drive other education efforts. Yeah. Is is motivation the main sticking point? I mean, or or is it just like knowing what the so like the latter is, I guess, what I'm more interested in. For especially, I think all of us here are sort of like bought in, but um, I haven't so much gotten as pushback as like knowing what the like lowest lift solved to you know each sort of category or each sort of. I'm thinking of it visually of like. What are the different segments of a delivery process that that these attack like what are all the attack factors basically and then what's the easiest like mitigation for each uh i i feel that that's on scope uh i feel that we probably would uh, defer that a little bit for a second iteration but uh some of them are like immediate right we we find a bunch of uh, compromises of certain nature and we go and we know that the solution is so we can pretty much point to the right place uh, i feel that the catalog uh, will help us also prioritize which uh, which solutions we want to uh, be more clear about and uh, more upfront about integrating so i have a question about the the catalog that you're producing it seems like a fairly like moderate technical document um, that I'm assuming like developers and and um, maybe about managers or security can use. Um, is it possible to also I I don't know whether this would be in scope, but to have like kind of like executive level something that um like executives could use in this case. Uh, I think it cut up a little bit on my side. Uh, could you repeat? So uh, I'm just wondering whether, like, what level of technicality would the document be? Whether um, is it going to be written very technical, or is it going to be also accessible to business executives? And what's the audience here? I'm just kind of getting a catch of that. So my. My understanding, and I think we can also discuss this, but uh, was that we probably want to target uh, like developer slash uh, DevOps engineer audience because they're the ones that can make the decisions. If we want to make like a separate track in which we can also give them resources to convince their project managers or so, well, we can also do that. But I, I, I don't know how broad we want to be. On this first situation. Well, it sounded like the the beginning, like you know, with the awareness goal. This is why everyone needs to be concerned about the supply chain. So it sounded like from the way you were discussing it, Santiago, that the like maybe the first page or the first half page would be the kind of thing that you could give executives, right? Like this is why this is why me as a developer or you know, my team should be spending a little time on this, right? right. Copy paste abstract. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> and then the then then people can dig into the the meat of it who are actually going to do the mitigations right and, and, and you know and then you can abstract maybe sorry Jonathan didn't hear you sorry Dan I, I, I think if you, you started that sort of security and your engineering level uh, and then provide a reasonable amount of detail so that then someone can abstract it and provide it to the, the senior management that would be uh, a useful um, useful place to go in, and then you've got enough detail, and you can subsequently abstract it. Because um, when I talk to um, a lot of people in different industries, and certainly within the financial industry, um, it, it's at that level that that um, the, the awareness isn't quite universally distributed. Um, and as long as we get that level of detail, then perhaps we can have one page, or someone, even the other engineers, could abstract that up. 
Right. And, and uh, I think this is a great opportunity, uh, you know, if we get the core resource to, uh, you know, that level of utility um, to, you know, delegate the extended activity to the CNCF, right? That translation, you know, to kind of the business stakeholders seems like a, you know, great opportunity to, to partner with, the, you know, the broader CNCF bring in some, you know, marketing tech writer support and, you know, extend, uh, you know, the work that you know, we, they can't do the, the, you know, the deep technical, uh, you know, efforts that, that we uh, can provide, uh, but they can do some of the, you know, polished translating and, uh, you know, mapping back to that executive use case. That's a good, that's a good point. Uh, I'd also, uh, I mean, crowdsourcing is a, it's a great way. Uh, I'm, it might also be useful for us to think through if it does have to go through a curation process or if it's like uh, what gets submitted is what gets seen. Uh, in other words, do we need, is, is anyone concerned enough to raise their hands for like, oh, I'll moderate this so that there is quality check in this or uh, do we just trust in terms of posting? Because I heard like someone say that uh, It'll be a nice way. I think it's San, it was San Diego, San Diego. So he was saying like, it will be useful for somebody to come in and post uh, the ones that they see online. Uh, so I would, yeah. What, what, do you, what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? So um, I, I don't know how explicit or implicit this is, but I, uh, my understanding is that I would be the one that will probably make sure that the project stays alive and that there's no like uh, on uh, unexpected changes that the community doesn't agree on. Uh, okay. I don't mean to say a benevolent dictator for life, but uh, more of a like uh, a guy that's keeping an eye on it and making sure that everybody is uh, on board with the direction that this is going. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, and I also just posted in the notes and in the chat. Um, the this sort of this action item proposal came out of um, the noticing that there was that Intoto had collected this supply chain compromises list. Mm -hmm. So if people have enthusiasm to point out supply chain attacks that aren't on this list, right? So we could use this, you know, where it is, you know, as a, a the plan was to use that as a starting point and. Um, and then, uh, and then Santiago agreed to take the lead to curate it and drive the initiative forward for the benevolent dictator slash leader Excellent. for the duration <laughs> of the project, which is relatively short, but important and corralling a bunch of people who have enthusiastically agreed to help. Excellent, excellent, yeah, thank you. Um, so, Yeah, so the next steps on this is to, uh, I mean, like what Sarah was saying, not to gate on us and uh, uh, get to the next stage of uh, getting a proposal out. And uh, we do have, uh, I mean, right now I'm not on my laptop, but I think there is a, uh, we have laid out a process for um, how to make this a project. Uh, so we so use that has already happened. Yeah. Okay. So this is it's 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 uh, the title still said proposal, but it was already labeled as a project. So, like I think that, um, and sorry if we you know our our transfer chair didn't communicate that well, but um, but since I was able to join today, um, Santiago, maybe you can first chime in and say if you need anything to move forward. It sounds like not. And then I think also a lot of people came to this meeting because they're curious or interested and, and we could also use some a little bit of time for people to chime in with questions or things mm -hmm. they want to contribute to effort. Yep, 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 sorry, apologies for uh, not being coordinated, but uh, yeah, anybody who wants to chime in. Uh, That is a, otherwise we could talk a little bit about, 
since Emily and Amy are there, any anything that we want to bring up to this team? Oh, Michael joined as well. Uh, so anything that, that was, we want to talk? Yeah. There was one thing that came out of the CNCF meeting yesterday, which was that Liz said that she was going, what was going to ask all the SIGs to uh, provide some kind of gap analysis or project analysis of. Mm -hmm. uh, space and at, at some point fairly soon and so there there will be a requirement for us to do that at some point soon there'll be a formal ask correct correct i think it's still in the talks and discussions in terms of yeah but it sounded like it might happen fairly soon correct correct yeah uh, we need to follow through with uh, liz liz and joe on that to see because uh, there is a whole bunch of qualification criteria what if there is overlap how much of overlap is considered an okay overlap uh, kind of questions that may arise in terms of uh, picking and choosing to fill in the gaps. Right. So uh, and we've got some clarity. Oh, we're, talking, we're, talking, we're talking about CM CNCF project gaps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, there, was, there was talk about... The ecosystem is in general that CNCF might help mm -hmm. close. Yeah, yeah. So can you clarify a little bit? Because I, I unfortunately had to miss the meeting yesterday. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, let me summarize that for the benefit of the entire team. So uh, there is a thread that's going on. Uh, uh, I think it's also an email thread anyways. So, but uh, Liz brought up uh, a point about uh, not randomly accepting projects to CNCF, but being able to like uh, pick and choose projects or even to some extent go and look for projects that actually fill in gaps in the CNCF landscape, uh, what we consider as landscape, right? So uh, that translates to security as well, uh, in terms of like, what do we what do we consider as landscape? Where are the gaps there? Are there any projects out there uh, that fill the gap? Is something that was encouraged by this to, uh, and the TOC in general, for us to consider. Um, it is still uh, very much, a, thought in progress uh, and uh, I think there needs to be a little bit more uh, definition or criteria in terms of like how we go about uh, looking at it but I think it's it's a really good uh, suggestion and an idea uh, it forces in both ways in terms of like uh, getting a land landscape that's understandable and applicable and useful for the end users and also be able to like uh, relate to the projects within the scope of a landscape so that people can choose those projects for their uh, users can choose those projects for their benefit right so um, so, so yeah was, and actually, um, yeah I just that wanted, was a context. Oh, thank you JJ for that summary and um, I'm actually really excited to like hear that being um, discussed at the TOC level because I mm -hmm. think that a lot of the motivation at least that I've heard individually from people to come to this group is because they see a gap right or they see you know issues it where or speed bumps um you know in the in or they're building things themselves that they wonder why am i building this there ought to be a thing and yeah, yeah. um and why i'm really excited about this um supply chain initiative that santiago is spearheading is it was precisely that kind of a gap that led to us wanting to do kind of a bottoms up approach on the supply chain thing, because we agreed that we, even yeah. though at the, it to, on some edges to Intoto and we're like, well, we're not sure that, you know, it, we totally respect that Intoto can't solve every single supply chain attack in the world. And then we're like, Ooh, what happens when you get to the edge there? There are some things there aren't, you know, easy to like you know there may not be easily referenceable solutions there so um so we're we've been doing that from kind of a bottoms up approach um through the security assessments work kind of early days there and so mm -hmm. um it's really i think from my perspective wonderful to hear the toc talking about that as well absolutely i think it is uh, yeah it's useful for the general cnc of community and security specifically like you pointed out uh, in that spirit, I think if anybody has any opinion, thoughts, and uh, suggestions, uh, whether you want to raise it here, whether you want to raise it as an issue and some propose things, uh, not projects in general, but like things that are, uh, that we think are gaps that will be useful to 
curate that information. Um, or if you want to reach out to me personally as well, that's fine too, like any one of us. Um, I also want to point out, I, I think you mentioned you maybe weren't on a computer, JJ. The, um, Aiden, who's um, new to the group, mentioned that he's worked. I don't know whether, um, mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance to look at it, but maybe Aiden could, ha had identified something that he's working on that we can talk about whether that's appropriate for this group or whether it's just, a, hey, I'm working on this if anybody's interested. Sounds good, yeah. Let's do that. We have eight more minutes. Cool. Aiden? Uh, yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'll be fast about it. So we, I, I manage a number of large, well, a number of GitHub organizations with large number of repositories, like probably 1,300, 1,400, something like that. And for a lot of them, they are not maintained, as you can imagine. And so I've been doing some work around automating like the archiving of repositories um, with the goal that uh, they're on github.com. And so uh, using the relatively new github.com feature to you know, automate pull requests for upgrading like dependencies on you know, Ruby, JavaScript, uh, Python, et cetera, projects, uh, which are most of the languages we use. So this is more application level concerns, but uh, it's something I've been thinking about sort of at scale and I've been working on uh, an NPM package to do that automation. So if you're interested, uh, I put the link in the agenda. I'll bring it down to the uh, notes, but you know, just reach out to me if you're interested in collaborating, using it. Um, we're only using it internally right now, so I'd be interested in getting someone else to try it. So happy to answer questions or see you the rest of the time. Perfect, perfect, yeah. Nope, uh, no, that was useful. Thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, please do put it in the notes uh, so that it's useful for others to track. Um, and like I said, anybody who's joining in, joining in new and would like to contribute, uh, Let's just make sure you do a PR on the uh, front page of uh, CN Security GitHub so that we'll be able to uh, reach out to you for any help or when you start contributing, we'll know who's. Thank you. We also have an um, open pull request for a new members page. So if you're a new member, you can check out that PR and chime in while it's in process. And soon-ish, we'll have a new members page. So. It has some like kind of pointers and tips about where to start and how to get started. Um, you know, working with the working group. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if we have a few minutes, and if Amy and uh, Emily uh, has anything to talk about, or Michael Ducey joined, so. Uh, if you want to check in and then give a give an update on uh, CN Six Security Day, uh, that'll be useful. Yeah, uh, I joined when Emily was actually given an update, so I'm not okay. sure what she had actually okay. said. Um, but sponsorship looks good. Uh, we okay. need more CSP responses, but that's um, we're trying to get an engine going around that, and mm -hmm. once we get a program, hopefully registration will be better as well. Awesome. We do have next the Friday like, for the CFP as well. There, there was a question earlier in the chat around uh, who should people reach out to about sponsorship. Me. Go okay. find me over on Slack. Okay. Same with any. Pretty easy to find. Just don't just buy another hard. diamond sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, if we can, if, if, the more the merrier, clearly. I know, but you're selling time on our agenda. <laughs> no, I know. That's, that's really the challenge. It's kind of like, oh, yikes. Um, and being able to actually make sure that we've got space for everybody is going to be fun. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah and uh, the Trello dashboard isn't shared with everybody, right? Like maybe a read only version, if we could share it with everybody so that people can look up the status, would be. Uh, uh, I, don't I don't know if that's available. Um, it's but, actually public. Like, Oh, beg pardon. Which, which dashboard are we talking about? Uh, the okay. Trello board. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was easy. It's I'll put it in the chat. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that, there it is. Cool. Uh, anything from 
you, Dan, Sarah. Otherwise, we can uh, give back three minutes to this team. Sounds good. I have a question about, yeah. about the six degrees. Actually, I have uh, I talked to a couple of people. They asked uh, on their talks. Uh, also in a KubeCon, is that kind of a blocker for a six security day or are they two separate things? They are separate things. Uh, so you could submit the same talk to both if you want to. What do okay. you mean two separate things, I guess, is kind of my thought. If you, you have to be registered for KubeCon to go to any of the Daisy Row events. And then these are just add-ons for that day. Um, which cost a nominal fee just to help us get the room and everything like that. So you do have to be registered for KubeCon. Uh, if you got rejected to KubeCon, then I encourage you to submit your talk to the Cloud Native Security Day. Um, does that so, answer? So what, I, I, um, so what I've, um, people have asked me is, uh, if they have a talk that's accepted, or for example, waitlisted for KubeCon, uh, if that talk is included in KubeCon, does it mean that they can't present at Six Security Day? I think they would point, have. I, I would just submit, and we will solve this problem as it comes up. <laughs> I think so. This yeah. is a lovely problem think... to have. I would love this problem. Well, I don't know that we want to encourage everyone with a security-focused talk at KubeCon to submit it also to Six Security Day. Well, people have already been notified, so. People are either accepted, waitlisted, or rejected at this point. Well, the question is, if you were accepted, should you? No, the question was if you were waitlisted. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I misheard. All right, uh, sorry. I if you're, if you're waitlisted and you're interested in possibly sending, also speaking or speaking instead at the Six Security Day, please go ahead and submit, and then we can make we can work with the CNCF people to make that decision on the back end whether if we slot it into Six Security Day or whether if they slot it into the main agenda. Right. Is that acceptable, Amy? As I come off mute, yes, that is absolutely acceptable. Um, yes. uh, please please so, submit, submit early and often, basically. So if, if you're waiting for <laughs> please submit and then yeah. we can work it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. If you've got any awesome. other questions, we have a channel over on Slack for security events. You can also come ping me, and I'm happy to be able to help answer questions. Awesome. All right. Yep. That was useful. Thanks. Thanks, team. See you all next week. All right. Good to see you all. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank you. Bye.